Ladies, gentlemen, and dark crusaders of all ages, with the amount of people jumping on to try out Lords of the Fallen, I've seen a lot of people get pretty stuck in so far. Not as in stuck like unable to progress, but stuck in like really diving into the game and enjoying it. And as a new addition to the Souls-like genre, there is one thing I know pretty much every player has a vested interest in, and that is, of course, the weapons. In any game like this, unless you are going pure caster mode, the weapons will have a major impact on the way that you play, the way that you think, and the way that you build your character too for a lot of people, and hey, even if you go hard on the magic side and the spells route, you have a limited mana pool, honestly, so of course even then, you will want a trusty wooden or metal companion by your side to whack, hack, and slice things up as necessary. So today we'll be talking about a nice collection of weapons that you can pick up for yourself relatively early on in Lords of the Fallen. This video will cover the section of the game leading up to Fitzroy Gorge as a level, as well as the very beginning of that level too, meaning that we will talk about the areas through to the third Remembrance boss, but of course, as usual, with these collection type videos, I will present it in progression order of the game, so if you are earlier on in, you can just get the info on the things that you are after and drop out as we get further into the list to avoid spoilers. Without further ado then, let's begin with the Faithful Bludgeon. This is a big, nasty strength weapon, and I mean that in the nicest possible of ways. It's what I've been using myself so far in my playthrough, and I am loving it. Big base attack, decent enough scaling for the early game, and it's just fun to run around whacking things with a big bone, honestly, and it uses the Grand Hammer move set, which I'm personally quite a fan of. As far as where to get this one, once you have reached the Vestige of Chabui, you have two choices. You can progress through the building and continue main story progression, or you can turn around, run back out to the big platform, and drop down on the backside to find a massive, sprawling side path with a ton of parkour. This path is quite long, but eventually, as you progress through it, you will reach this massive stone bridge. At the end of the bridge is an emergency exit from the Umbral, and there's a fun trick here where you're supposed to use the lamp just held in front of you to walk to the right spot along the bridge, then put the lamp away when you are on top of the platform below you so that you drop onto the right spot, and right here then is where you will find the Faithful Bludgeon for yourself. Second up today we have Hallowed Praise. This is a short sword that only has C-minus agility scaling, but a low agility requirement, and it also has a chunk of holy damage on top of its physical, and 80 bleed status buildup which is pretty high for these early game weapons, so it essentially has three accessible damage types as you attack an enemy, which is fantastic foolproofing against some enemies just being immune or at least heavily resistant to certain types of damage. As far as how to get this one then, it is pretty much just along the main path, after the Sister of Sin boss fight, you'll walk out into Pilgrim's Perch proper, and you just want to continue along here until you reach this first floating parkour platform, and after you jump to the following platform, the sword is simply sitting on the ground, waiting for you. Third then we have the Perdam Felchin, 22 agility requirement, not the greatest scaling, but pretty solid base damage, which makes it work as an early weapon for sure, and it lets you have another short sword if dual wielding short sword sounds like something you'd be interested in. As far as how to get this one then, we'll go from the Vestige of Blind Agatha in Pilgrim's perch. Then just head past the buckethead enemy in front of you here to come out and drop down to the right side of the platform to reach another wooden platform, and then at the end of this one, on the left, there is a little hidden beam that you can actually drop off down to and find this sword. It is definitely a decently hidden item, so always fun to collect those. Fourth up is the Hammer of Holy Agony. This is a regular hammer, D plus strength, and D plus radiant scaling, so it is a nice mixed stat weapon for you holy paladins out there, decent base damage mixed between both physical and holy, but then also some bonus bleed status build up on top of that which makes it really tied together nicely. As far as how to get it then, this one is a bit more of a journey. First you need to get to the Pilgrim's Perch Key and buy that from Captain Stormund in the hub area of the game. Then once you have that, we go to the Vestige of Blind Agatha and Pilgrim's Perch once more. Right beside this vestige is a locked door that you can open with this key to a later game area that has higher difficulty enemies. But you can get this without killing anything by just running through past all the enemies just taking this path and eventually through this way you will eventually reach an outside area. Immediately on your left as you pop out to the outer area though, you can find this waiting for you on a little beam of wood. Fifth today is the Bloody Glory Sword. This is a grand sword, and it is an extremely powerful one for the point in the game where you can actually get it. This thing has fantastic base damage with a nice physical and holy split, a whopping 300 bleed buildup, which is absolutely nasty this early on, like really really strong, and then for scaling it is a C for radiance and E for strength, meaning it actually scales quite well for an early weapon as well. As far as getting 
this will be continuing on from the same place that you got the Hammer of Holy Agony, so this is in the higher level area once more. Continue through the outer section of this area and you'll once again head back inside to a little hut that has a flower bed and a ladder. You can set up a vestige here if you want, otherwise just head up the ladder and through the tunnel in front of you and you'll find a lower area with an optional boss on the left, but instead if you just hug the wall and continue going up the stairs on the right, just go up the tunnel, up the stairs, everything past all the enemies, eventually you'll reach the top where you can just find this weapon simply waiting for you on the floor, simple as. Sixth up is the Angel's Axe, a nice, big, nasty, strength-focused axe. This thing has C-minus strength scaling, which is a bit below average for early weapons, but not terrible by any means, and it also has pretty notable high base attack power. And it is the first proper Grand Axe that you can find if you want to mess around with that moveset too. And of course, it looks really cool, because why wouldn't it? To get this one then, we are moving on to the Forsaken Fen area, and from the Vestige of Valade beside our good friend Byron the Gravekeeper, you want to progress forward on the main path and cross over the little bit of wood in front of you, and as you continue through this tunnel, you'll see some murky water on your left, unless you are in the Umbral Realm, in which case you can find a nice fleshy loot box down at the bottom of this little ditch in front of you, which you can open up and find the weapon for yourself. Seventh, we have Resh Massa's Sword. D minus strength sailing, D plus agility scaling, but the combination of both together is quite decent if you're running both stats. Only physical damage, but not a bad weapon at all. The thing that makes this one special is just how far away from anything of relevance it actually is. As far as how to get it, then sticking to the Forsaken Fen area, as you continue to progress this little area, you will eventually find the shortcut that will lead back around to the Vestige of Valade. If we go from that Vestige, then through this shortcut, specifically only if you are in the Umbral Realm, you will see a ladder on your left that isn't there otherwise. This actually leads to a particularly long side path that you can follow for quite a while, and if you take the path that leads you sort of up the hill rather than down, you will eventually wind up right above where you fell in earlier to find the Congregator of Flesh boss. And it's at this upper perch where you can find the sword just there waiting for you. Eighth up today is Kukajin's Sword, and this thing is absolutely exceptional. C- minus agility scaling would be decent enough, even if this was a pure agility blade, but it also has E strength scaling just for a slight bonus. But the thing that makes this blade actually incredible is that it has decent physical damage, sure, but it also comes with 60 bleed buildup and 60 poison buildup. So you can get really nasty with status application while using this thing, and while poison and bleed won't do much to random trash enemies that you pass through, they can be quite strong against a boss where you get to actually see their effects properly. As far as how to get this one then, well, this is a bit of a weird one. As you continue progressing through the Forsaken Fen, you'll reach a nice swampy bog that you need to go umbral to continue through. At the back left side of this area is a little cave with a petrified NPC that will sing when you're far away and then will talk to you if you actually walk up and interact with it. The singing makes them particularly hard to miss, but they will basically just give you a quest, and if you complete the quest, they become a part of the story and they can be brought as a summon for a number of bosses if you're into that sort of thing. Alternatively though, you can hit them while they're petrified, which will instantly kill them, and then they'll drop this weapon on the floor for you. I found this by accident. I didn't mean to kill them, but I've since found out, since the sword isn't acquirable if you don't kill her, so I don't really much regret my choice. Up to you if you follow me or let her live though, that's your choice. Ninth today, then we have the Pale Butcher's Blade. C minus strength scaling, which isn't too bad. D on agility, which is pretty good for a secondary stat scaling. The base damage is good, but the neat part of this is that it actually does wither damage, just straight up as a bonus on every hit. So every time you connect with an enemy, they also get a bit of gray health that you get to pop as bonus damage the next time you hit them. This is quite the specific little bonus, but it makes this sword extra interesting just for having it. As far as how to get it then, it's in the same swampy area as Kukujin's sword. You will eventually round back to the entrance and knock down a bridge for a shortcut that allows you to walk back through the area without being forced into Umbral. If you then go from the entrance back across that bridge where the flower bed is, the hut immediately in front of you on this bridge will have a breakable piece of wood at its entrance, and inside of this hut you can find this sword for yourself. Finally today then, we have Bloodlust. This is an extremely solid short sword, double C scaling on both agility and Inferno, which makes it extremely solid for both of those stats. Base damage split between fire and physical, which is pretty cool, and it also has a 60 bleed buildup as well as 60 burn buildup, both of which are pretty strong statuses. On top of that though, a little bonus this weapon has is that it actually will restore a little bit of your health when you kill an enemy, which of course makes it significantly better. As for how to get this for yourself, then once you reach Fitzroy Gorge as a level, simply progress through the area, holding to the left-hand side as much as you possibly can, and then eventually you'll find this battlefield of warring factions in front of a little fort. Past this, there is a little mini-boss within the fort for you to kill who isn't that hard, but after you kill him in the very back end of his boss arena, you can find a glowing red chest tucked into the corner on the 
the right and opening that up will net you this weapon for yourself. And that just about does it for today then everyone. A wonderful collection of 10 strong or interesting weapons that you can pick up early on in Lords of the Fallen with a little something for everyone regardless of what your main stat is. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy using any of these weapons for yourself, especially if you didn't know about them beforehand. Let us know any more cool weapons that you find if you think that they are worth sharing with everyone else and it could be included in a future video. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye